we were asked by the California Air Resources Board to bring an understanding of what are the energy and environmental consequences of changing pavement, in particular for substituting a more reflective or cool pavement for a more typical and darker pavement. Cool pavements are part of a suite of what are called cool community measures, including cool or reflective roofs and uh, urban vegetation, and more recently, cool walls. And these are used to um, mitigate the urban heat island, which is, say, lower the air temperature in the city to help bring it closer to the air temperature outside the city, and for some of these technologies, also to reduce the solar heat gain of buildings. And if you can reduce the solar heat gain and thereby cool the building, you don't need as much energy to keep the space inside comfortable. There were two elements of the project. One looked at the consequences of changing pavement albedo for the use of energy in buildings. This included the indirect effects of changing pavement albedo, how does changing pavement albedo change air temperature? How does changing the outside air temperature change the use of heating and cooling energy in buildings? Another was to look at the direct effects of changing pavement albedo. How does changing the pavement, reflective, uh, pavement reflectance modify the amount of sunlight incident on the walls and windows of a building? How does that affect the building's need for cooling, heating, and lighting energy? We also uh, considered, and this is a very important part of the project, how does changing the nature of the pavement, for example, uh, what it's made of, affect the um, energy and environmental impacts of the pavement over the life cycle? There was a lot of early work. There's actually a law passed, AB 296, uh, and this research is coming out of that to some degree responding to that legislation. Um, up to this time, a comprehensive tool that puts together the materials and construction, the building energy effects, and the, and the climate modeling for the entire state uh, that models what the change of albedo will do to the temperatures in the city uh, wasn't really there. So I think this fills a major gap, and this is actually a question that's been raised not only in California in response to the legislation, in response to a desire by local government to try and put together a, a, a toolbox of strategies that they can use. But it's also been a national question. Uh, Ronan and I both have uh, talked to Federal Highways uh, Administration Sustainable Pavements Task Group about this. We put it all together into a computer tool with a simple graphical user interface in which the operator specifies which of roughly 30 cities in California um, is being considered, the fraction of that city's pavement that is considered for modification, and provides two pavement scenarios. For example, one pavement scenario might be rehabilitation um, of a pavement using um, mill and fill asphalt concrete. Mm -hmm. Another scenario might be rehabilitation of a pavement using a uh, bonded concrete overlay on asphalt, or it might be a uh, maintenance application where one can choice is a slurry seal, which is a popular solution used now. Another one might be a reflective polymer coating. The operator can uh, use this graphically driven tool uh, to specify things like the reflectance of each um, treatment, the thickness, the service life. The tool then uses uh, pre-calculated information about the nature of um, each of these uh, treatments and about the consequences of changing pavement albedo in different parts of California to return a suite of um, energy and environmental indicators. It uh, tells the operator over a 50-year life cycle how it changes the consumption of energy, how it changes the mass of carbon emitted, how it changes the emission of um, very uh, fine particulate matter, PM 2.5, um, how it changes um, sort of ozone equivalent um, pollution, how it changes the outside air temperature, and how it changes the concentration of ozone on a af summer afternoon. The ability to look at different uh, pavement lives and what the impact of that would be, uh, different types of materials and different kinds of structures with different lives, um, some of those results, we had a pretty good idea on some of those, but this is a much more comprehensive tool than we ever had before. Some further advances would be to now use the tool and try and hone in on where might cool pavements be of most value, what are things that can be done uh, both on the material side, 
and in what the cool pavements do uh, to really start to hone in on strategies for where is this a right tool, uh, where is it not, and how much so that they can then compare cool pavements in their toolbox with other tools in the toolbox to come up with the most cost-effective set of tools. Uh, I think one thing that's important, we recommend this in the report, is that this be combined with life cycle cost analysis so that you can get a bang for the buck. And so finally we've got a tool that actually quantifies the bang, combine that with the life cycle cost analysis to get the buck, figure out bang for buck for different things you can do, which is completely context sensitive, and this tool allows you to look at the answers within different contexts, and then compare that to other strategies that, uh, that a city or, or whatever kind of policymaker might want to take a look at.